Hello my little precious. You're probably really curious about some things that I've sent to you. Like your first sewing machine book and your sewing machine. I got the same one but it was discounted because it's quite ugly but I'll be able to teach you everything that you need to know because I'll have the same exact machine. I also sent you a little kit. This kit was actually given to me by Nana a long time ago. And I hope that you're able to keep your kit, your first kit too, for a very long time. Now there are some things that are in the book that I'll go over with you before we get to the sewing machine. So there are, are several different tools that you'll use in order to make marks on your fabric so that you can cut it in the right places. This is a dressmaker's pencil and I believe I sent you one in a kit but I actually don't use this very often. I prefer to use markers. They come in a range of different colors. Um, they easily wash out if if you're going to be using it and the part that you're making the mark on is going to be on the inside of the fabric where people won't see, you don't have to worry about it at all. But if you're making something that you're going to wash after you make it, this washes right out. So this is what I prefer to use on all my, on all my things that I sew. And every once in a while I'll just use a little piece of chalk and they say that you need dressmakers chalk and I've actually never used dressmakers chalk I've just used normal chalk but if I would imagine that the dressmakers chalk would work better or come out easier I don't know because I don't have experience with that there's also a different range of needles. These are hand sewing needles. And there are pins that you'll need. And I think you have some with you. I keep my pins in this little tomato thing which actually came with that kit. A seam ripper. Now, I'm very grateful to have a seam ripper with a lid. My video was actually postponed for quite a long time because Felix ran off with my seam ripper and he could easily puncture through when he grabs to bite this so I'm glad that I have a lid for mine but if I lost my lid or if I bought one of these that didn't have a lid this is what I would do so first you wrap a rubber band because safety first and then I'd pick a color. I'm going to pick red for danger or stop. So when I'm, if I have one of these that's dried out, then I can just slide this on. And then I have a lid for my seam ripper that can't easily come off, but it can come off when you need it. So the rubber band, it just keeps it in place. 
and if you want you could even bring up the rubber band up over this too but I don't do that I have another one that the cat ran off with that does, does not have a lid but I'm not worried about it because I did this to it so he'll be safe and he won't get hurt with it okay you'll also need a measuring tape and you'll need scissors there are a wide range of scissors so I have my basic scissors that I use for cutting my patterns out and these are for paper the fabric scissors you never use on paper because it dulls them and then it's so hard to cut your fabric out after the scissors get dull so there are thread snips I use this to cut off threads or to cut off little extra pieces of the fabric that I don't need and if I have a child around the house or a pet that I don't want it getting into them I can always just put the rubber band around it so that they can't get into it these are some basic scissors that I use to cut out my fabrics but they're not exactly basic these are fabric scissors and they're designed to be used on fabric so you do not want to use these on any paper there's also the peering ones now some fabrics like to come undone and unweave while you're trying to work with them and I find if I use these pair of scissors to make the cut they don't unravel as much and then there are these now these are actually quite dangerous but they're also very useful you could actually cut off your own finger and I have sliced off my nail more than once so always be careful there is a safety guard but of course the safety guard is not up when you're trying to use it and that's when when I cut my nail which I was very happy that it was just my nail and not my finger because it sliced through like butter okay so you probably are also curious about some fabrics so this is fleece and this fabric is a man-made fabric it's very soft it gets pet hair in it really easily and it is water resistant so it won't soak up water if water's on it long enough it will eventually go through it very slowly but it won't absorb the water and this is what they call PUL and it is a waterproof fabric it has a lining here and I think I've probably sent you stuff made out of this very fabric before so you can make like wet dry bags with these um, people make snack bags out of them 
they make all kinds of things for if you want to keep it um, the inside with something that may be moist and you don't want the wetness to go out on the outside. And there is cotton. This is a piece of a cotton square. And it has a right side and the wrong side. This is where I would make marks on it and then cut it out. And then we have cotton, um, cotton flannel. Uh, now, cotton flannel is different, very different than fleece. So, see how it is. The cotton flannel is thin, and the fleece is thicker and it also feels a lot different although they're both soft this is more of a man-made soft than the natural soft of the cotton uh, fleece so or cotton flannel sorry cotton flannel this is good when for things that are up against your skin. It's basically, to describe it, it's just like a piece of cotton that they rubbed out and, until they made a very uh, soft, kind of bubbly surface. And this is good when to put on things that you don't necessarily want moving around a lot but you want it to be comfortable. But it also attracts cat hair. There are also different types of thread. Now this is cotton thread and it's kind of like um, the cotton flannel where the surface, oops, the surface is, let's see if I can get this to focus. The surface is very, um, it's not smooth. It has the little hairs on it. This is polyester and it tends to be smoother. And this is um, rayon or rayon and it tends to be even smoother. Now, I don't have any silk thread to show you but can you see the transition of how smooth it gets from this one to this one? And that's how I'm able to tell the difference when I look at them. But they also should be marked when you go out and buy them. So, on any fabric, there is always the right side and the wrong side. And the wrong side isn't wrong, it's just not the side that you want showing when your project is done. So this would be the wrong side, and this would be the right side. Can you see the difference? Because this part has a more vibrant color that you want to see, and this side, the colors are more muted. And if you can't tell which side is which, then it probably doesn't matter.
So a lot of projects, sometimes you'll want to sew with them with the right side facing, facing out. So let's say if I just wanted to make a little pouch and I didn't want to flip it. So I would just sew along the edges and leave an opening to for the, the pouch. But let's say I didn't want to, people to necessarily see the rough edges of the fabric. Then I would sew these together and we'll use this to simulate me sewing it. They're just little clamps. It's another alternative to pins. And we'll pretend like I'm done sewing. So I flip it. And then I have, then this is the part, the presenting piece of the fabric that I want to present to everybody because it is more color and more vibrant than the muted color of the back. If you have any questions, just have mommy call me and I will answer your questions. So I think this pretty much catches you up to the fabric. So the next video will actually go through some of the operations on the machine, which I'm going to do one handed because I'm going to be holding the camera. So I hope it's not going to be too bouncy for you. So next week, we'll look at the actual machine. Bye-bye, sweetie.